In this application problem, we're going to see how real-world pattern can be modeled by sine or cosine curves. So here's one about blood pressure. A person's resting blood pressure is 80, 120 over 80. What that means, by the way, if you ever hear a nurse take your blood pressure, is that the blood pressure at its highest is 120 and its lowest is 80. Because as your heart pumps blood through your uh, veins, the blood pressure in your veins is going to be higher as the blood from each pump is passing through and lower when it's not. Um, so just like any other sine or cosine curve, it's going to be evenly spread out between or take an even amount of time to go from the min to the max and then back to the min again and keep going forever. Um, so what we can do with this, the 120 over 80, we can take the, the process we use to make a graph of sine or cosine, which is midline amplitude range, and we can work backwards from that. We can say that the range goes from 80 to 120. which means the midline, you can either do the midline first or the amplitude first, whichever you prefer. Why don't we do the amplitude first? The amplitude is not the distance between 80 and 20, because remember, 80 to 120 is two amplitudes. The amplitude is the distance from the middle to the max, not from the minimum to the max. So the amplitude is the distance from 120 to 80 cut in half. So that is a distance of 20. That's our amplitude. And if the maximum of the range is 120 and the amplitude is 20, that means the midline must be y equals 100. Because that's the number that is 20 units below the max. And so what we've just figured out for our equation is that the k must equal 100 and the a must equal 20. which are two of the three parts of our sine equation. The third part is the, based on the period, we can figure out the B. So for the next part, we're going to read the rest of the sentence here. Uh, this person's resting heart rate is 60 beats per minute, which means that they are doing, if it's 60 beats per minute, that means it is one beat per second, so the period is one second. The blood pressure goes from its min to its max and back again, all in one second. Now remember, that does not mean that B equals one. There's that conversion there. That it's very tempting to say that the period is B, but get, you know, this is something we have to lock into our brains. B and period are not the same. The period is equal to two pi over B, and b is equal to the 2 pi over the period. So b equals 2 pi over 1, so b is equal to 2 pi. Which means we have everything we need to write the equation. Um, they tell us the variable to use. They say p for blood pressure, t, is equal to the amplitude, or I should say the a, times the sine, and the reason we know to use the sine is because they told us to, of b times t times our variable plus k. And that is the function, which I'm only realizing now has been on your screen the whole time. And we can see the graph there does exactly what we described it to do. It goes from 100 up to 120, down to 80, back to 100 every one second. Now, the fact that we chose a sine curve means that we are starting in the middle. Had we wanted to start at the maximum, we would have used cosine curve. So had we written that 20 times the cosine of 2 pi over t, plus 100 
that would have started at the max. So when it doesn't specifically tell you whether you're using sine or cosine, the way you're going to decide is, does our time, assuming that that's what's on the x-axis, does our time start when the y value is at its middle value or at its maximum value? In this case, when time starts, our blood pressure is at the minimum, I'm sorry, the middle value, so we use sine. In our next example, it's gonna be a little bit different. We've got population of fox in a certain forest varies periodically over time. At its lowest point, the population is 210, and it reaches its maximum of 350 about two and a half years later. So the number of fox drastically changes from 210 to 350 every couple of years. So our first step is always going to be to think about the y values. So here again, we're going to work backwards. Instead of mid midline amplitude range, we'll go backwards. The range, number of fox or foxes, I really don't know, in the forest ranges from 210 at its lowest to 350 at its highest, which means the amplitude would be half of that distance, which is half of 140. And so the midline must be the distance between 210 and 70, or the distance between 350 and 70. It's the same thing. Sorry, not the distance between the two. 70 is the distance between the middle, mid, the mid, minimum and the midline. So that midline is up at 280. So we can translate our A is 70, our K is 280. That's half the battle. The other half is thinking about the period. So if it takes, you've got to be careful about this, it takes two and a half years for the population to go from its lowest up to its highest. But remember, that's not the period. So read these questions very carefully. If it takes two and a half years to do half of the period, right, it's done the first half, but now the population is going to dip back down again. So that's going to be another two and a half years, which means the period is five years. There's no formula to memorize for this because they could give you lots of different kinds of information here. Your job is to read what they give you and translate it. So here the period is five years. So if the period is five years, that means b is equal to 2 pi divided by the period, which, you know what, I can't simplify, so that's it. And so we're going to sketch a graph. And the directions ask me to sketch first. So that's what I'm going to do. X-axis. Y-axis. Notice how I put the x-axis at the bottom there because um, there's no such thing as a population of negative fox. So I don't need to worry about that. But I have, I'm going to graph everything that I know so far, starting with the maximum at, 200, at 350, the midline at 280, and the minimum at 210. So I will label those. I understand I'm not really to scale here. Sometimes you'll see it drawn like that to show that it's not to scale. What you do want to do is make sure that things are evenly spaced out where you have the numbers. The other thing I can do is, yeah. And then on the x-axis, my period is five years. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four even spaces, and that's going to be five years. The halfway point is two and a half years. Halfway to that is 1.25 years, which is useful if I want to figure out what this third step is. It's three times 1.25, 3.75, three quarters of the way to five years. But this is a little bit different from what we've seen before because in this case, the 
number of FOX starts at its lowest point and it reaches its max 2.5 years later. So we're starting at 210 FOXs. We're reaching the maximum at two and a half years later, which means we pass through the midpoint about halfway. And if we keep going with this pattern, you can see that this doesn't exactly, this is certainly not a sign, or I'm not going to go well. I'm not going to use a sign here. But I can't really use exactly a cosine curve either, because the cosine curve is supposed to start at the max and go down. Well, that's not what happened. So in this case, what we can do to make it so that we can use a cosine curve but still start at the minimum is if I just put a negative in front of that cosine curve. So instead of just being 70, it's negative 70 times the cosine of 2 pi over 5 t plus 280. And again, I use that negative cosine, put the negative sign there, because we started here at the minimum instead of at the max. And that's what that negative does.